Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanalee Zadon. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333, and we are starting another game between Rar and Orphelius, the second of three games that they played. I don't know if this is meant to be a best of three or first of three or what exactly, but we will continue to find out. So, Rar and Orphelius on Altier Crossing. We saw this map recently with Rar. I can't remember if that was against. I can't remember what that was against, actually. I'm sorry. I know it was Rar. I don't entirely remember the opponent. But it was Rar. It was Rar versus Ivan D. Okay. So Rar is once again going for no reclaims. Orphilus, on the other hand, going heavily for reclaim. There we go. That's what I was looking for last time I casted this map. Get those constructors up. Get that reclaim going. That's what I wanted to see. All right. No need to worry about energy like last game. I mean, Rar was saw last game. Just was tanking energy. They had about 10 less metal or 10 more metal than energy the entire game. But that's not Rar reclaiming. That's Orphilius reclaiming. So Orphilius is good for energy. Rar, on the other hand, does not seem to realize their keyboard has an E key. And has therefore decided to refrain from reclaiming. At least intentionally. And Rar getting scattered out, Orphelia's coming in with the dirt bags. Both players are going for shields, which is a pretty solid choice given that Cloakies are generally well, Cloakies have been worries have been buffed recently. Cloakies have been generally considered underpowered, and buffs, as anyone who's had any experience with competitive games knows, buffs take a while to kind of trickle their way through the metagame for people to realize, oh hey, this thing is actually useful. Or, oh wait, no, that actually wasn't enough. So I don't anticipate a lot of cloaky play in serious competitive play for a little while, probably a week or two at least, maybe a month. Assuming the warrior buff was enough to make cloakies considered viable again. I mean, cloakies are not garbage tier, but they're just, for a lot of people, strictly outclassed by shields. They are, they are a tricky factory, and you've had to play them tricky for a while. So shields are not an unexpected choice. But, like I said, Orphelius... It doesn't really matter, because both players going for the drip bag scouting, both players know what the others have, and both players are actually... Orphelius cares more about where Rar is, more so than what they have. I mean, they know enough, they see the drip bags, they know that Rar is going for shields, they don't need to scout much else. I mean, the exact arrangement of their base is not going to be a big deal right now. And that they're going for thugs is just about at the level of information entropy. If you've been seeing any of Rar's games recently, that's what they do. Either slashers, or thugs, depending on what they're playing. But yeah, thug commander, that is RAR. That is RAR's game plan in a nutshell. Like, you don't even need to scout that. So Orphelius, therefore, not bothering to do so. Just going for the counter right away, going for the rogue, knowing that's going to work. It's going to do the trick, gonna hit the shields and take them down. I mean, it's accurate enough for the slower thugs and, of course, the slower commander. And we are seeing a Guardian Commander this time around. Once again, Machine Gun, which appears to be Rar's favorite of the weapons. Which is a little atypical. I understand why. Machine Gun does allow for a fair amount of anti-raider power. Like, it's a pretty good riot weapon. But it's a little unusual. Beam Laser and Particle Beam used to be the most favored weapon. Back in the old static comm system, basically everyone had a Beam Laser Commander. And when Light Particle Beam was added, it was considered to be possibly more powerful than Beam Laser. But nowadays, I haven't really looked too closely. A lot of people are still going for beam laser stuff. RAR seems to be favoring very much the the machine gun. Not the heavy machine gun, mind you. The machine gun. Which, like I said, from a raider perspective, or anti-raider perspective, makes a lot of sense. However, from a raider perspective, Orphelius just doesn't care. And this is one of the things that we've seen before that RAR strategy has a tough time dealing with. Light units going around the flanks. When it comes to things going around the main drag, yeah, the commander works well. It's a heavy unit in the middle of the map, doesn't have a huge amount of mobility, but it does have a huge amount of power in the place it's in. It just doesn't reach a lot of the map. So its main threat is the fact that it provides pressure. I mean, as we can see, Orphelius clearly sees on radar, oh hey, Rar's army is coming. Orphelius knows they're coming, they're forced to move back. Like, that's the thing, is that Orphelius has to move back in order to address this. Because we saw the last game, Rar is just going to go for Defender Nest, and we see this time too. Rar is going for the Defender Nest. And we should be seeing Rax here fairly soon, although maybe Orphelius won't do that. Maybe Orphelius is just going to go for a straightforward attack strategy. The Bandits won't go very far unless they're protected by Thug Shields. Because, like I said, we have Machine Gun coming in here. 
I'm curious if Rar fixed up the thing with the area shield, though. Because we saw last game that area shield does not do well. At all. Like, area shield just allows for so much to pierce through. While personal shield tends to be a little bit more reliable. Or at least tends to get hit less often, so it has more of a chance to recharge. That's the important thing. But yeah, I... I don't see any artillery at all. We're just seeing... Rogue, well, I guess rogues are semi-artillery, but we do not see main artillery. No racketeers. Rogue, thug, and some bandits for support. I'm a little surprised Orphelius is not going around the flanks. These bandits are not going to help in this fight. They seem to be aware of the fact that the commander is upgraded for riot purposes. And thus the bandits are useless. Or not useless, but difficult to use well. I'm just surprised that Orphelius is not sending them around the flanks as they were before, and then attacking the main base from behind, forcing Rar to push back. Because Rar right now is dictating the pace of this fight. Completely. Orphelius has no has no power over what's going on here. They're purely in reaction mode. And the bandits moving forward to their own detriment. Great detriment, in fact. And now, are they going to go around the back? No, they are not. They're still staying stale. They're not going down around the flanks. Why they're not doing so is beyond me. Perhaps Orphelius is not confident in their control abilities. But really, those bandits are useless here. At least if they went around flanking, there's not much defending. There's a... Well, okay, there is the one. But still, further north... A couple of some bandits. I guess it'd be hard for four bandits to do much damage. But... Still. Orphelius doesn't know that. I guess they could assume. At any rate, it doesn't really matter. They aren't building enough bandits to really get a bandit army there for harassment. Just seems like one of those things that could be used to possibly cut off maybe the thugs. Actually, cutting, cutting off the thugs would be a great idea. There's nothing defending the supply line. And thugs do not do well against bandits. That could work beautifully. I don't think that's going to happen, though. It looks like... No, in fact, we are seeing harassment. And that outlaw is... Is a bit of a threat, but it's actually a ways away. There is one angle that it covers, and around the back, it does not. So Orphelius is going for it. We're going to have to follow that once it gets to the main base. But for now, it looks like... Okay, Orphelius and Rar by Orphelius' base is a complete meat grinder. Though I think Orphelius does have the upper hand. Rar stopping the reinforcements, and... Okay, that's the thing I was worried about, was that Lotus... That Lotus providing a lot of fire support. Lotuses. And that was the thing. Linus had help with the factory, though. That's actually pretty clever, but... Yeah, now the outlaw moving into a bit more of a useful position. Raw, raw realizing the error of their particular positioning there. But it doesn't really matter. Orphelia is able to push back on even footing. The thugs just pushing in. Doesn't really matter. Raw has been optimized for raider... For anti-raider countering. They have not been optimized to get rid of assault. They have... They do not have anything to deal with heavy units. I'm not even sure what they'd use. Lightning gun, I suppose? Beam laser wouldn't be a terrible idea. Rocket launcher would probably work well. Against thugs, specifically, rocket launcher would work well. And Rar... I'm not sure if they're going to change anything up. They do get another weapon. I, I'm curious to see what they're going to go for. I mean, remember, it is a dynamic commander system, so Rar can just change that up. Though it's going to take a little while for that to happen. And Orphelius, once again, they've secured their... Well, not once again, but now they have secured their base. They fended off Rar's attack, and it looks like Rar will be pushed back to their main base. Orphelius' little scout, while it didn't cause any damage, did allow them to know that Rar really didn't have much. They didn't have much economy, didn't have much in the main base, really didn't have much to go off of besides what was built directly in front of Orphelius' base, and now Orphelius has gotten rid of that. So Rar's not doing too well, and Orphelius knows it. And that's confidence right there, just marching straight into the base... I don't even think they're microing too much. Now they're microing a little bit. But still, they're just marching straight in. No fear whatsoever. Taking the north side as well. Defender nesting into the north. Well, defender creeping into the north. And over the south. Essentially trying to do to or trying to do to Rar what Rar was trying to do to Orphelius. But I suspect it will be more successful simply due to the lack of defenses. Not that it matters, though, the main base is the main problem, and Rar's commander will we ever find out what it becomes at level four. I'm thinking no. But, oh, maybe. It is retreating. Okay, it's retreated far back enough, and it is going to be... Is it going to be known? It is a beam laser. And now dead. Well, that was a way out of that. So yeah, take notes. This is actually pretty good. So yeah, when you see that sort of defender nest thing come in there... Thug Rogue does a pretty good trick. Just, I mean, okay, admittedly, a lot of that was that Orphelius knew it was coming in advance. That is a cheese build that Rar did, and if you know it's coming, I mean, 
remember, when we saw the game with Ivan D, Rar had built up this entire area before Ivan D really started to counter it. Whereas Orphilius was on top of that right before it started. They, or they already had thugs and rogues being built. They had stuff already up front to deal with this as it was starting. They weren't trying to get through half a... No, they weren't trying to get through a dozen defenders, half a dozen lotuses, a stinger, and the commander, along with all the reinforcements that had been built up up to that point by Rar. They just had to deal with like three or four defenders and a commander and a handful of thugs. With their factory right there, and with their economy very much secure to the north, which Ivan D didn't have, I don't think. Ivan D had some of, something of an economy, but yeah, the economic strength for Ophelius helped a ton, and the fact that they caught it really early helped a ton. Anyway, that was that. So we're going to have the last game between the two, which I guess was the tiebreaker. It looks like it was, in fact, a best of three. And that game is going to be on Icy Shell. Stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment. Although, I've... I'm really curious how Rars can actually make Commander works on Icy Shell, because Icy Shell is... I mean, the last two maps we saw, there are very clear start points. You know where your opponent is. On Icy Shell, you don't. Like, the North and South... You have the entire North and South band, so we'll see. Stay tuned for that. Be up in just a moment. <laughs> 